We are here because we are dedicated to helping the entire CrossFit community. Determined to elevate coaches, box owners, athletes, and everything in between, we believe that this mission will begin right here, right now. While this time and this goal begins with you, our hope is that you take this fire ignited within you and weave it into your own life with the same unrelenting passion to give those you have the privilege of coming in contact with the best hour of their day. Welcome back to another episode of Best Hour of Their Day. Ackerman and Fern here, your hosts. And today we're discussing another, I I suppose all of our topics are important. Another hmm, controversial or just, I would say, topic that most people don't know enough about. Ooh, that's an interesting way to phrase that. Do you agree with it? Um, yes, I do. I do agree with it. A lot of our posts really center around this thought that programming doesn't really matter. That's what the topic is. And, and we talk a lot about it kind of, you know, in, in passing, but I think when you really stop and look a lot at what we put out there, it comes down to the same basic principle. Like, Hey, yeah, you should be smart and intelligent about your programming, but even the dumbest of programming yields success. Success, of course, being fitness for your members with good coaching, with good whiteboard briefs, with proper scaling, you know, all of those things that come into play. And we're going to talk about those all in, in the next few episodes. We're going to have a theme for the next three to five episodes, but let's start it off here. Does programming matter? I'm not in a controversial mood today. I don't know. It's weird. You seem very, I wouldn't say melancholy. I would say exhausted. (laughs) You, You married a couple last night? I did marry a couple yesterday. Um, but that's neither here nor there. So, uh, so that was, actually, that was my second couple that I married. I don't think it was the uh, both school together s- <laughs> a day. I don't think it was the ceremony that maybe made you a little tired. It may have been the uh, reception after. No, no, the uh, the after. Yes. Yeah. On on all things. I, I can no, tell but, because so your but, house is. No, com- dark right now like your house it's it's one of those sunday evenings in your house where i could just tell like kids be quiet we're having an right. early night well Speaking it's also it's just it's just dark here it's just dark here but the um yeah i think you can see my kid back there pressing his face up on the window but the we can uh hear him. We can yeah, hear him. yeah yeah the I, it's so it's not it's not that programming is not important Okay. It is important. Said a little bit differently, it is secondary. And this is what we talk about in the level twos. It is secondary to so many other things. And it's, yeah. So it's not that it doesn't matter. But if, if we're, if we're going to have a conversation about does it matter when weighted against teaching, seeing, and correcting group management, presence, and attitude demonstration? No, it's secondary to all of those things because any what let's just say I had the worst written program ever. A good coach is going to be able to to sort it out and and manage all of those things. They're going to be able to teach the movements correctly, to modify, to scale, to make sure that people are hitting you know uh, an appropriate stimulus. All those things. So I, I think it's worth it's worth the discussion that it, it, while it is important, and if you and if you like to program, then play around with programming. You know, my, my concern is that we put, every, we all want to hang our hat on this programming thing. And I just don't know that that's appropriate. Yeah. And, and, and by no means am I or you suggesting don't spend some time on it. If you're the guy that wants to program personally, if 
I owned a box these days, I would hire out my programming. You know, there's, there's some great companies out there. Or I would let one of my coaches explore it if they really wanted to develop and get better. I know plenty of coaches where that's kind of their goal. So cool, go mm-hmm. for it. I just wouldn't get too lost in it. I think a lot of the times when we say this, I, I think a lot of box owners are buying into it at this point. I think buying into what the fact that programming is, and I think you put it well, it's secondary. It's secondary to many things. You know, there, there are many things that. It's just it. Kathy and I were having this discussion the other day because we were batting around. We were just, it's part, it's one of the topics for our weekly meeting that we have. And, and we were batting around the idea of like, should we, should we start programming again? and do and the two of us because and i hate saying this i really do hate saying this but our members really do enjoy our programming as well as a lot of other people i knew for for years there was a lot of people that would follow uh the program that we did at crossfit rice and and i'm and i'm not saying that to to sound like uh, i'm this world-class program or anything like that um but people did enjoy it which is something to consider right if i'm if i'm talking about the happiness of my members so Again, it's not that it matter. It's not that it doesn't matter, but it doesn't matter nearly as much as all of the other things that we're doing in there. It's like making personal connections, you know, like checking in on people, scaling, making sure people are developing skills, like all of these things. And, you know, I just, I get, I get worried when I talk to coaches and affiliate owners, when they say, well, our members, you know, why, you know, the, the question is like, what makes your gym unique, which, and people will say it's the programming. And no shortage of gym owners will say that. And to me, that's alarming because that means they're missing a lot of things if that is what we're hanging our hat on. And that's concerning. Yeah, and you know, my point was I think a lot of people that just train CrossFit, obviously the members out there, they think to themselves how important uh, their programming is. Like, well, I want to improve. And same holds true. And when we say programming doesn't matter, let's make a few uh, let's make a few clarifying statements. One, there's bad, there's bad programming, and that would be there for sure. Is bad programming? Yeah, that'd be minimal variance. It would be a lot of redundant move pat- movement patterns over the course of the week. Probably uh, biased in one way or the other, like too many heavy days or too many long days. So mm-hmm. there, there's bad programming. But let's say. It, it, so long as you're not one of those, you know, if you're doing, I, I, and just to clarify, I, I think strengthless Metcon every single day is bad programming for general population. And at the same time, because two things can be true at once, I think people should do strengthless Metcon and Metcon plus strength, but, but not every day. I think that is, I think that is poor programming. Yeah. Well, if you, you know, one thing that I always try to remind people of is, if you're doing strength plus Metcon every day, that's not variance. Right. It's the same thing. Cause, cause rarely do the boxes that do strength plus Metcon decide to do Metcon plus strength or strength plus strength mm-hmm. or Metcon plus Metcon, you know? So, but I, I will say as someone that was pretty outspoken about getting rid of strength and Metcon since moving out here and, and training at uh, Ralston Creek, we do strength plus Metcon probably, close to five days a week, maybe four, you know, weekends get changed a little bit. And I will say there are things I do enjoy about it. I've gotten stronger, which I don't think you can get with just throw. Let me rephrase that. You can get stronger with strength two or three times a week. I've gotten stronger faster, but there are definitely days where it beats me up because we're either doing a deadlift strength and then deadlift in the Metcons, you know, it's just Mm -hmm. the volume adds up if you do it too often. That's my concern. Right. And I, you know, if you just do the math on, on some of that, which is, again, you're talking about general population, just your average Joe, right? We're not talking about people who have aims at competing, um, stuff like that. It's just, I just, and I don't want to go down this rabbit hole, but the, it's just too much emphasis is put on the programming and not enough emphasis is put on other things that are way more retention oriented because I can, I can give other things that will, will allow for like people to get faster, stronger. You can write accessory programming. You can do individualized programming for people who want to do that. So there's a lot of options there. 
Um, and I think it, it's, I just, I would like to see people because I think it's going to be better for them and their clients if they focus on other things. So if you were talking to a box, what would those other things be? So I would take a look at things like retention, you know, things like what is your onboarding process? Right. So we'll, we'll actually, we'll go the other direction, right? So programming could very be easily be wrapped into what we would describe as a premium service, meaning I can write some sort of individualized programming or uh, accessory work that's, that's very tailored for somebody who's trying to achieve a specific goal. You know, so if you want to hang your hat on programming, and then simultaneously, if we kind of pop the hood on the business side of the affiliate and there's no premium services being purchased by the clients, that would be where I would start, right? That would be one, pl one place I would start. I would say, hey, stop worrying so much about the, the programming, the GPP programming or, and writing that and, and, and spending so much time on it. And I would dial in the sales process and what my premium service suite looks like. So that, that's, that's one place I would go because the reality is, does it matter? There is almost no way that somebody could convince me or kind of show me that the programming has an effect on the bottom line of the business. And I know people get like, it's not about the money. It, well, yes, it is kind of sort of right. So you should be spending your time on things that add value to the members. And if they truly add value, then that will in turn drive revenue, right? So I don't want to talk about revenue and value independently of each other. They're, they should go hand in hand. And we've talked about this before. So that would be one of the other things is that I would look at is like, what is your service offering suite look like? What is your sales process look like? What is your athlete onboarding look like? So th these are all the things that most people don't have dialed in. And that's where I would spend my time. Like get that stuff sorted out, spend less time, you know, worrying about the, worrying about the programming and you'll be way better served. And you can, cause you can always come back to the programming. Like you can, and you don't, it doesn't have to be all in as well. You could be, you could dabble in the programming aspect of it too. Like just, you know, not so much time invested there. It's just very little return. Yeah. And, and we, you know, we've discussed in the past, one of the first things to delegate or hire out. There are some out there for 50 to a hundred dollars a month. And most likely if you're going to put any sort of effort into it and provide any sort of decent programming, you're putting in five hours a month, I'd say on the low end. On the low end, if you're going to do it right. And that's, yeah. you know, that would be, that would might cover the time for the lesson plans as well. Yeah. And I mean, that's not including the fact that so many of these companies these days are giving lesson plans with it. So let's take a look at it from a different perspective. Let's look at it from the box owner perspective, dealing with members, because we get this a lot. Hey, I want to follow X training. I hear this is great. Mm -hmm. Although, would you agree that you don't hear this quite as often these days? I, I think that's fair. However, it's, it, it is still a thing. It's still a thing, but it's, it's mildly less. Yeah, I think, you know, although perhaps I don't know what CrossFit's going to do with the games in the future, if there's going to be regionals again, hopefully it doesn't come back with everybody trying to make regionals. But I think that was really the reason we started to see people, care. not that they care less, but they're a little less, uh, you know, focused on, hey, we need to follow this or that. So speak to the box owner, their members, you know, they make a change to a different program or their members want this or that. How do you address that with them? So A, going back to what we've talked about before, find out who the people are who are who have beef. You know, people who that are in air quotes complaining about the programming. Find out who they are and go sit down and talk to them. What do they want to see? Right? And then what I would do is, is this is not hard, right? Let's because you can do this even if you are paying for outside programming. Find out what they want to see and sprinkle a little of that in. All right. Like let them like let them voice their concern and then deliver a solution for their concern. Like it's a win-win, you know, they're like, Hey, we want to see more barbell cycling. You know what? 
totally reasonable. I'll, I'll make sure that there's more barbell cycling in for next month. And they're like, cool. And, and now that convert and now that gripe goes away and it, and they may come back to you in another six months and they'll be like, Hey, you know, you know, it'd be nice to see a little bit more barbell cycling. Like, yeah, it probably would be. And then you can just add it in. So it doesn't have to be all the time, right? You just need to address their concern and they'll probably be very happy about it. Even if it's not like in perpetuity where it's barbell cycling galore all the time, you know? So I think there's very reasonable solutions to that when people complain, because we, we do that all the time. People come in, you know, who care about programming and you and I both know it doesn't matter from a standpoint of people are going to get fit. They're going to get strong, all those things. If it's, if it's well, if it, if it's applied with good variants and we'll, we will address it. We'll swap some things out. We'll put some things in there, give them what they want, you know? Yeah. And when I talk to people about programming, doesn't matter. I think it's important that we know what we're really saying about that other than, yeah, there is bad programming, but the point is if you're doing classic CrossFit training, you know, you're going heavy once or twice a week, you're using couplets and triplets, you're typically in the eight to 12 minute time domain, you're using complementary movement patterns, going hard is what's going to get you the results. And it doesn't matter if it's deadlifting or thrusters or pushups or burpees, you know, the community at the box, the, the pushing hard, the keeping your athletes safe. It's all that stuff. I mean, Rich Froning made a career. You've been to his box at times when he has trained as have I, mm -hmm. where he shows up, literally slaps a few movements on the whiteboard and, you know, might throw some rep schemes and some times on there. And that's what they did for the day. Well, in, in his defense, I think I don't know that people give Rich enough credit for his understanding of programming. I think he's a very gifted programmer. And so I think that's quasi unfair. And, and it's also different because that's what he does all day. Like it's literally his job to train. So while, while, while the scene that we see in this very, in this very long movie, we get to see five seconds of is him walking in there, slapping some things on the board um, might seem haphazard and uh, not really well thought out, but I'd be willing to bet large sums of money. And I actually know this because I've talked to James Hobart at length about this in the past. They're thinking about all of those things in advance, right? Like that he just walks in, he's got a, a fairly good idea of what he wants to do and why he wants to do it. And then they make that decision, you know, on the, on some of the less important things, right? So if we think about the, the programming lecture from the level one course. And we talk about what are the things that we can vary. So we've got the obvious one, you know, reps, load, time, movements, function, uh, priority, all these things. When he walks in, he pretty much has an idea. He's like, I know kind of what time to main. I know that I really, I want it to be like a moderate load, right? I know what movements and what function I want out of these. And when we say function, we mean push, pull, upper body, lower body. Um, so he's got an idea of what he wants to do, and he may not be completely decided on the rep scheme. And at, the, and at that point, the rep scheme in the rounds and all that stuff is really the least important thing. The big ticket items have been, have been decided, right? And that's what he wants to do, and there's a reason he wants to do it, because he's thinking about the previous days, and he's thinking about where he wants to go, which is how good programming should be done. And so, yeah, it might look that way when you watch him do that, but I think some credit should be given that like, that's what they do. You know, that's not what the rest of us do for a Right. And, and, but that's a great point. Cause you know, when we say programming doesn't matter, I think what you're saying about rich is, is spot on. Hey, look at yesterday. We did deadlifts and handstand push up. So we pulled and we did a, a push in this vertical plane. So maybe we should uh, squat, right? We hinge, we haven't squatted. And maybe we should pull in a different plane rather than off the, you know, so, hey, Fran goes well here, right? Mm -hmm. Now, that's the point, though. That's not necessarily great programming, but it's not terrible. And, or we can, right. you know, off the top of your head, give me two other movements that you would have thrown in there. It, uh, in where? In what you just said? Yeah, rather than Fran, we deadlifted, we did Diane yesterday. Mm -hmm. We did so, Diane yesterday. Right. So maybe Fran's not good because same time domain, same, same reps. Time domain. Yeah. Right. So, right. So my first thing would have been like, okay, we're going to go longer, right? Like 15 ish minutes. We went, you know, sub five, 
you know, yesterday we'll go 15 in there. You know, if we did a, if we did a pull and a push overhead, like I'd probably maybe do, um, something a little bit longer. I'd probably throw a monostructural in there, whether it be rowing or running or bike or something like that and pair it with, uh, maybe, a, you know, that's a couple of things, a couple of, so like right off the top of my head, I would probably go like monostructural gymnastics, weightlifting, monostructural, probably be bike gymnastics, burpee, and then weightlifting. I might do like a front squat or something like that. Yeah. And, and, you know, think about that. You change from the row, which is a hinge. We hinged yesterday, right? Right. We're doing a burpee. So we're pushing in the frontal plane versus overhead. And now we're squatting, you know, which, which takes, you know, completely different movement than the deadlift, but you and I came up with two different workouts there. Then we have the, so point, you know, point being, yeah, like rich thought about those things, but any number of things could have worked in there. More importantly, with variance and with smart movements and, and reps and time, we're, we're programming to maximize intensity there. Right. And so that would be one thing that I would challenge a lot of people to really dial in is really see if you can get your members to understand intensity. And when well, I say understand intensity, you know, really get after it and that so and that is part of the pitfall of the strength plus metcon gig is subconsciously everybody makes a choice where they're going to go hard in the paint when 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 given those two options and so to that to that end we're kind of doing them a disservice because they're going to mail it in on one of them very few people can go you know full send and that short of a window on back-to-back -back training people. oh for sure. I mean, like I was saying with the days we have deadlifts and then deadlifts in the workout, I know I go lighter on the deadlifts in the workout because I want to get stronger at the deadlift during the strength portion. And I'm like, this right. is, you know, and that's a conscious decision. There are probably plenty of other times where you're just like exhausted mentally. Like I don't want to push here anymore, but one of our, in, in the next coming weeks, we're going to do other, other podcasts on this topic. We're going to talk about you know, how do we get members to understand intensity or maybe even just the coaching staff? How do they understand it? We're going to talk about scaling factors to consider. We're going to talk about getting members to hit the stimulus. And then something that you've brought up in the past that we'll revisit is that RX month. Because, you know, really this whole topic, we get a lot of questions on, you know, how do I get members to not care about RX? Or how do I get members to really hit that stimulus? And ultimately it comes down to you as the coach and you know, but it, it starts with this programming piece. And yeah. I just think that it's just something that people should, where else could you be focusing your time? Right. So, so uh, here's maybe a, a more, a better way to say it, which is programming matters. However, there's definitely a diminishing return with regard to the amount of time and the outcome of said programming as a box owner, right? So to some degree, it's good enough. And yes, you should continue to refine that. But there is absolutely a, a, a diminishing return on your time with regard to the value that it's going to bring and the outcome that it will deliver to your clients. So at that point, once we've kind of reached that point of no return, then I should probably be spending my time elsewhere on other things that are more member centric. Absolutely. And I think, you know, just one other thing to throw out there is yes, we do recommend potentially outsourcing your programming, but it's not just done once you do that, because these people that are programming for you don't know how many rowers you have, don't know your member's strengths and weaknesses, don't know, you know, how big your space is, don't care that it's snowing here, but sunny in California. So, you know, you need to be able to look at those things and adapt it to your gym. So even if you're outsourcing, you're probably looking at a, a good hour a week. And that should include, you know, talking to your coaching staff to make sure everybody's on the same page with the stimulus. You know, for example, we just uh, hit some five rep maxes this week. And it's important that all of your coaches encourage your members to push this week or to Go right. for those PRs. I mean, that's, that's exactly what we do at CrossFit Rife. So, you know, we, we use 
um, ham plan and Cassidy, you know, contributes, you know, a decent amount of, of, of that programming to what everybody gets. And we, we still look at it every week. We look at it for the next week or the week afterwards. And we kind of pick it apart a little bit. Like, should we move these days around? Do I want to have this one on this day? Or, you know, let's, uh, let's swap this movement out. Cause we haven't seen that other one in a while. So we still, we still play around with it. Um, and it's never done, but we're also never going to get it perfect. So we just have to understand again, how much time is reasonable to spend here. And then going back to like, a book that you and I are both reading right now, which is the one thing. I mean, I finished it, but yeah. You'll well, you'd it. listen to it because you, you can't read. You listen to it. <laughs> um, the uh, is, I mean, here, this is probably just a great way to kind of end the podcast. Is that the one thing that you should be spending your time on as an affiliate owner that's going to propel your business and your community to wherever you guys want to go? Probably not. Definitely not. And and just to give people an idea, I love that. And let's wrap it up there. But when you think about it, you know, as I was, as you were asking that, I think for so many people, you know, we need to have acquisition. We need to have retention and we need to increase the client value, the average client value. All of your new people don't care about your programming. And the people that yeah. are sticking around are seeing the gains of it. You know, they're seeing the, the, the fruits of their labor being rewarded. So that right there should answer the question that it's, it's not the one thing you need to be focusing on. Right. So again, you know, we get a lot of messages because of the content that we put out on social media. We're trying to draw attention. We're trying to get you guys to at least think about it. And again, it's not that programming doesn't matter. It of course matters. It's just should not be your priority. All right, Fern, another great episode. If you guys need us best hour of their day at gmail.com, check out our Instagram at best hour of their day. Shoot us a DM if you want. And of course, if you didn't get in on the first round of affiliate, you we've sold out. We're going to open again in the, I would say, what is it? Mid future. Is that a word? Uh, it's, I mean, you definitely used words. I don't know if it is a word. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what mid future means, but. But if you're still interested and now wasn't a good time, or you just didn't get on one of the calls with us, hit us up, shoot us an email. We'd love to add you to the list and you can always book a call out in the future. Uh, the link is in our bio on Instagram. So check that out if you haven't already. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. So you never miss an episode of the podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and on all major podcasting platforms at Best Hour of Their Day. Thank you so much for tuning in and for being a part of the best hour of our day. See you next time.